They think they are standing up for women's safety, but instead House Bill 465, which we said time and time again, is dangerous for women. You know, we've been here for a while and we tried to go deliver our petitions directly to Governor McCrory, but we couldn't even get close to him because they asked us to leave. So we know that the way kind of message that sends to us. Earlier today, I was talking to two of my supporters about what really goes on in a doctor's office when a woman decides she needs an abortion. And Governor McCrory and our legislators have no idea what women are going through. They think they are doing right by women, but they are not. Governor McCrory, we want you to know that we are watching. Next, we'll have one of our champions come up and speak, Dr. Matt Zerden. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Matthew Zerden, and I'm an OBGYN who practices in Chapel Hill, Fayetteville, and Raleigh. I'm here representing myself and my patients and not the organizations I work for. House Bill 465 is restrictive legislation that impedes access to abortion care. The most widely respected international health organization, the World Health Organization, has continually asserted that abortion should be available without delay. Mandatory delays such as that put forth in House Bill 465 impede abortion access. As a physician, I provide my patients with the best and most comprehensive care possible. Our relationship is built on trust, privacy, and open communication. The provisions of this bill undermine that trust and privacy. Politicians who support mandatory delays such as this assume that women who have abortions do so on a whim. The women I see in my practice are thoughtful, insightful, and they think long and hard about the decisions that they make. Ultimately, they choose what is best for their health, their well-being, and their families. They have often consulted those whose opinions they need and respect. They do not need politicians mandating delays for their care. Mandatory delays do nothing to dissuade women from having abortions. They just make it harder to get them by putting needless obstacles in the way, occasionally placing more significant delays than the laws would intend, which can cause women to have more risky procedures. When this occurs, this legislation can lead to potential harm, not protect these women, as the supporters of this bill claim. Politicians should not insert their agendas into women's and her family's private health care decisions. In regards to the personal medical information that will now be shared with the state, another part of House Bill 465 imposes burdensome reporting requirements going well beyond what is the current standard data collection by the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services. The measure would demand personal information from women and physicians, going so far as to require doctors to share private images from a woman's medical file with the government. House Bill 465 also fails to adequately protect the confidentiality of physicians. Could, this could leave doctors vulnerable to harassment, threats, or even worse. There is no other law in North Carolina that requires healthcare providers to provide copies of ultrasounds, x-rays, or any other medical images to the state. Such documents should remain in the woman's medical file and not in the hands of the government. In summary, House Bill 465 is a clear restriction on safe and legal abortion. The bill has no basis in medical best practice or, sci or scientific evidence. Not only does it arbitrarily triple the state's mandated waiting period to 72 hours, the bill also forces doctors to provide a woman's private ultrasound images to the government without needing her consent. We also have Senator Van Dyne, who's now going to come and speak. Thank you, Doctor. Yes, my name is Terry Van Dyne, and I represent uh, Buncombe County in the North Carolina Senate. And I am proud to be here today, standing up for women all across the state. Our message to Governor McCrory and the legislative Republicans is simple. Stop playing politics with our health. In 2013, the legislature passed and the governor signed um, the infamous motorcycle bill that made it harder for North Carolina women to get access to a safe abortion. It had provisions in it that were not only unconstitutional, but clearly not driven by medical necessity. They were outright and intentionally cruel. Governor McCrory broke his promise to the women of North Carolina when he signed this legislation. Today, Governor McCrory will again break his campaign promise to women, signing into law yet another bill that restricts access to abortion by tripling 
the medically unnecessary waiting period to 72 hours. Shame. This is a betrayal to all of the women of North Carolina. Politicians are again inserting themselves between a woman and her doctor. They need to stop. Governor McCrory and the North Carolina, North Carolina legislature need to stop playing politics with our health. The decision to have an abortion is one that is intensely personal and that a woman takes very seriously, consulting with her doctor, her family, and her own personal beliefs. Politicians are not doctors and they certainly have no right to tell us how to best make decisions about our own bodies. Though deeply disappointed by both my Republican colleagues and the governor for pushing through yet another piece of divisive social legislation that restricts a woman's access to health care, I will not leave here today with my head hanging low in defeat. Instead, I will use this betrayal to remind me each and every day why it is crucial that we continue to fight in the legislature, not just for women, but for all North Carolinians. We cannot sit idle and our, allow our reproductive health care decisions to be made for us. We have an opportunity next year to change the leadership in this state. And I hope you will join me in doubling down our efforts on that fight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you again for everybody that was in attendance. And um, we just re really want to impress on Governor McCoy that we will remember what he did today. And um, we're watching that. Thank you.